Papa built a fire. That's when he fell dead in one morning. And that was why I always remember. Mama said it was 3rd of March. And it was pouring rain and storming like crazy. And he got up to, to build a fire. And the fireplace was a big brick when we across the end of the room. Well, you know those windows on that house where those are back there where the chimney is? Well, that was all a big brick fireplace. And, and he, he was up there blowing it. And I guess I... Uh, and he fell dead. He just fell back in the floor dead with a stroke. So what? And, uh, so what happened? Uh, Grandma find him or? No, she was there. We she was there with him. We were all in the room when he did it. Oh. I, was, I don't. I don't. Uh, I was too little to know what was going on, but I was there too. He was at building a fire. He kept sitting there to build a fire in the fireplace. Uh. And and uh, he was bent down and it was blowing it, and he just fell back out on the floor dead. And then but I was so little, I didn't, I don't really know, know too much about that at all. <laughs> then what but happened? Mama, well, Mama left him laying there, and <laughs> she went and walked for miles early in the morning and pouring rain, storming, and she walked for I don't know, two and a half miles. I didn't realize how far it was, and. Uh, that until one time me and Jim went down there and she walked all that distance to get help and she went to a man's name Charlie Brown and he was a good friend neighbor and she went to him and he took her to I don't know where a fat chicken mug or I don't know where he took her to the funeral home or anything like that to get a hearse to come and get Papa and then on up the day I don't know what time because I was too little to know stuff like that the hearse pulled up there and they took Papa out yeah, I don't know how long they can be, but I, I, I think when they brought him back, I was hiding. I was scared of him. And so I stayed hidden under the quilts and somebody found me and I was about to suffocate. And Arnold was trying to hold me up to the casket to look at him and I was definitely afraid of him then. And, oh, yeah. And I don't, yeah, and Arnold was wanting me to see him, but I never did see him. But he said he was had on, he wore a black suit all the time and a black hat. And I guess that's what he had on. I don't know. I was scared to death of him. After that, but before that, I was, every time he saw me, I was in his arms. But then when he died, I was scared of him. And then uh, they took him to High Point and had his funeral up there, and me and Alma had measles. Alma had them really bad. And Mama battled them up in quilts and took them. And, ooh, it stuck something awful with those fevers. <laughs> and then, yeah, and we had to sit over on the right-hand side of the church by ourselves. And Papa's casket was at the middle. There's about three sections of benches. Mm -hmm. And everybody else was in the middle row. And Mama and me and Alma and me and Duke was over there on the right by ourselves because they, oh, they smelled bad. <laughs> the fevers of that. <laughs> Their fever was terrible. They were, burning up. they were burning up with a fever. Well, I think that's probably because they had the measles and it was keeping them away from the other children. Yeah, and, and everybody, everybody in there, because nobody who, who, nobody knew who had the measles, not you know, they were catching. And uh, you, and so me and Elma caught them at school, I reckon. And boy, they were really sick. But Mama had to take them. She didn't have anybody to keep them, so she bought them up in a quilt. Each one of them a quilt, and here she went with them. But we sat on the far side by ourselves. Nobody was over there but us. And you thought it was because Alma and Mother were stinking. <laughs> Well, their paper was so high, uh, and they would probably get it to everybody in the church that didn't have, that didn't have measles. And they were burning up with the fever when we went when Papa was being buried. And uh, they were in bed with them. And, and it's catching, measles are catching, and you're, you're catching when they got the fever. And so, anyway, they were having chills and everything else, and Mama bottled them up and Wilson. She farted. How far did we get? Okay, we got to uh, the preacher saying. Telling about oh, yeah. Jesus arising yeah, in three days. He, he, yeah, he ascended into heaven. And then I got up, the, I remembered it on the third day. And so I remembered it on my little finger backwards. And I got up early that morning and I went out on that front porch to that brick house and it faced the east. And I was by that window there on the right on the porch. And laying and watching the sky, I got up early and I didn't tell nobody what I was doing. 
pants got out there, and my son finally came up, and I kept watching for Papa to go into heaven. And I didn't know if he was going to be in his casket. I didn't know if he was going to be saved in the suit. I didn't know how in the world he was going to go into heaven. And uh, so I just laid there and kept watching and watching, and my eyes were just filling up with that song. I was about to put my eyes out. And so Duke finally came out there, and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm watching Papa send him to heaven. I said, the preacher said he would. And this is the third day, and I counted backward one, two, three on my finger. He lay down by me, and boy, it just got put our eyes out. And he jumped up, and he went in the house, and he said, well, I'm not going to look for him anymore. I'm going in the house. <laughs> I didn't. I kept watching the sky. And uh, so finally, I guess Mama missed me about 10 o'clock. I don't know what time it was, but it was later. And boy, did she put my butt in that house. She came around the corner there where that porch is on the right, while we faced in the, the, you know, the front, the right there where I was coming. She came around the house there, and she stopped at the edge of that porch, and she said, Young lady, you get in there, you get in that house right now. And I said, Uh-uh, I'm watching Papa send in to heaven. This is the third day, one, two, three. <laughs> Boy, she put me in that house. But my eyes, I was about blind. And uh, so I didn't get to see him ascend in to heaven. But that's what the preacher said. The little kids, I didn't, I didn't know how he was going to get up there, but I was going to go see him anyway. Put my eyes out. But I'm sure he ascended. And then uh, later on, I, would have, I don't know how long it was, I was sitting on the steps on the side there behind me and standing at the foot of the mountain where we lived at the foot of the mountain. And I was sitting there, and there was a, where they parked the cars. You came up through there and parked. And I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, this tent came, just from nowhere, a big tent, like a covered wagon in the old-fashioned movies. You know, you see a tent covered yeah. around thing. Uh -huh. It covered the road, and then Papa, he came down from the mountain, and he, he came to me, and I saw him, and I started screaming. Now, this really happened. And uh, he came to the foot of the mountain, and he walked on across the yard, and he had on his black suit and his black hat. I, he was probably buried in it, I don't know, but that's what he always wore. And he came in that tent where I was, and I'm screaming, Papa, go back, go back. Mama's cried ever since you've been gone. Go back, please. And he reached down, and he picked me up in his arms, and he was holding me, and I was kicking for dear life and screaming because I, Mama had cried so much since he died. And uh, so he put me back down, he set me back down, and he turned around, and he walked back through the backyard, and back to the foot of the mountains, and he disappeared, and then that tent disappeared, and then I went back in the house. Wow. That really, that really happened. He came, he came back. Yeah, he used and, to, uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Daddy. I was going to say, he used to carry you all over the place, didn't he? Oh, I was in his arms all the time. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm surprised I ever learned to walk. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when the, in that spring, it would probably be the spring before he died when I was like four years old, three or four, he would uh, he carried me out in the yard with flower beds where, and that would be over the back of the house to the to the left back there. And there was all these tulips and all the and prettiest flowers, just a big garden of them. And daylilies, oh, I've never seen so many daylilies was there, just a big bed. And he was trying to bend down and hold me in his arms and hold the flower open and look down inside of them. And I wanted down. Duke was out there in the front yard and I wanted to go where he was. And he kept on pulling those flowers open and I'm kicking like a mule. And he finally had to let me go. But I was wanting to run down where Duke was at the front. And, but he helped me and I had to look at those old flowers. <laughs> <laughs> but to, to him, you know, I was the love of his life, and he had those tulips, the daily list, rather, telling me about each one of them, and opening them up with his finger, and holding me in his arms, and, and me kicking like a wild Indian, I wanted down, I wanted to walk, but he just always carried me, he just, he just loved me to death, and yeah, I don't know why, because I, I, I was different, I guess, like an albino, <laughs> <laughs> my hair was white as God. It was white too. My my, I was on up there before my hair ever started turning dark to be a blonde even. And I was just kind of oddball. But I, he just loved me to death and would never let me walk. It's always in his arms. If you saw him, you saw me. <laughs> and then that morning he got up and he fell dead, and that was the end of him. Mm. But it was bad, really.
But I did say he did come back, uh, you know, and uh, whatever you want to call it. There's yeah. a word, I guess, for that. I don't know. But it's not coming to me now. But it, it, there is a word for what come back. <laughs> but my belief in him, so little that he, he thought so much of me, he did come back. Even though it, what he wasn't in his flesh, I don't guess. I don't know about that. Now, he could have been in his flesh. Who knows? God works in mysterious ways. Yeah, he picked you up. Yeah, he picked me up in his arms. Yeah, he did. And I was kicking because I was scared to death that Mama was going to come out and start, and start squalling again. And I was telling him, Papa, go back. Please go back. Mama hadn't quit crying since you've been gone. But I wished I hadn't. Through the years, I, I never have forgotten it. I always wished that I hadn't kicked so. But you know, I, didn't, I, you know, I was scared. Well, yeah. And I was just really scared to death because suddenly he came walking, you know, down the foot of the mountain there, right across the backyard, right in under that thing. And that thing just happened to appear there. It just, it, it just happened. Nobody put it there, but the good Lord, it, it, it just, it just happened. And I went in it, and he, he came down there, and he came under and grabbed me up in his arms. Yeah. Uh, Lord, have mercy. And then I, I was so glad to see him, but I didn't want Mama crying anymore. <laughs> I had about enough of her crying. <laughs> <laughs> Here, and I went back in the house, and I didn't tell a soul about it. Wow. Gee, Mama quit me for telling a lie, and I wasn't telling no lie. <laughs> I was telling the truth. But I just see how long after his death did that happen? Oh, about, the, about that same week. Oh, it was that same week? Yeah, yeah, or maybe a week later, it, it, during that time, you know. Uh. There he comes. That tent went up first, and he, he came under it. I went in it, and he came in the other end. There was no end to the tent, no doors or anything, no nothing like that. Yeah. It, just, it just came over the road there. Like a covered like, wagon? Like a covered wagon, a tent thing on it. And then he came in on the end next to the foot of the mountain, and I went in on the, I could be the west end, I went in on the east end of it. And, and I was standing there when he came in. And I saw him walking, he, he came right across that backyard through those woods, and he came right in there to me and grabbed me in his arms. And it really happened to, yeah. I was so glad to see him, but yeah, he scared me to death because that mama had cried so much, I didn't want her crying anymore. And I thought, I figured, well, she just start squalling again if she saw him. So he set me back down and turned off, turned around, walked back to the mountain and just disappeared. So, um, and then that, and then that, that tent thing went away too. It all just, it just all went away like magic. 